If you could successfully convince people that telling a young boy that they can cut off their pen 15 or letting a young child get a double mastectomy is healthcare, I don't know what you can't convince people of. They call it gendy affirming care and it's not affirming it. The Inflation Reduction Act spends more money creating inflation. The Patriot Act is not patriotic. The Speaker of the House can barely formulate a sentence. People can't afford an extra dollar and 50 cents per gallon on gasoline, so go buy a $60,000 electric car. Everything in Joe Biden's America is seemingly backwards, and going woke isn't helping anything or anyone. When you go woke, you go broke. Just ask Warner Brothers. In a move that stunned Hollywood, Warner Brothers Discovery announced its drastic decision to shelve all plans to release the movie Batgirl, which already completed production, folks, after investing, get this, a reported $90 million into the project. The latest movie in the DC universe marked the franchise's first attempt at welcoming a transgender character, a string of sources cited audience were not a fan of this woke approach during test screenings. Now, while this is only a report, it would make sense that woke Hollywood would take a radical defense against letting a film with a trans character bomb at the box office. So let's bring in our final guest of the evening to weigh in, Turning Point USA contributor and comedian Bobby Sausalito. Bobby, welcome. Thank you so much. So this Batgirl movie had a lot of hype. It brought back Michael Keaton, who's original Batman, uh, to reprise the role of Bruce Wayne. And now it's essentially becoming a tax write-off after, like I said, investing nearly $100 million. That is a lot of dough. Do you think that Hollywood is maybe afraid of a movie with a trans character flopping? And what message would that send to these woke activists and the Hollywood elite if it was released and flopped? I think it's just an acknowledgement that you don't need to incorporate these types of things into our entertainment. And we keep seeing people transitioning away from this type of content. They want to be entertained. They And this represents such a subset of a subset of the population. It doesn't need to be in there. You don't need to affect the narrative in that way. And you see people moving away from things like Netflix and other places that don't align with their beliefs or their understanding of the world or the world or the country that they want it to be. And I think that this is just another reflection of that. Just let Batman or Batgirl or whatever be that. Let it be entertaining. It doesn't need to push a narrative or push the line that they want people to uh, believe is what everybody believes. Yeah, it's so funny. And, and now you're seeing people coming after uh, Beyonce and some of her song lyrics. She says the word spaz. They say that's offensive. Now she's actually caving to the woke mob. Just another uh, in Hollywood that's saying, you know what, uh, we'll do what you say because we don't want to get canceled. Yeah, I mean, they're changing the meaning of words to fit the narrative. That's their whole strategy. It's like if it doesn't fit into what we if it doesn't fit into what people traditionally understand, we'll just change the definition. That happened during, I believe it was the Supreme Court hearing for Amy Coney Barrett. They changed the meaning of a word and People that have dictionaries that are 10 years old or even 20 years old, they see that these words stayed the same for decades, centuries, forever, yet they can change it in real time on the internet and so many people are so quick to go into the memory hole, they forget what happened a week ago. So if you can change the meaning of words, then we're not all talking about the exact same thing. We're not all on the same page and they know that. And if people just look, up, look it up on the internet and forget what the word mean, meant a year ago, you can change the narrative to fit whatever you want in real time without most people knowing. Well, speaking of, of kind of being a chameleon like that, you know, this woke agenda on the left, it's not only backfiring, it is causing some people to actually have a change of heart. And this is really shocking. Former Disney star, uh, she's a singer, Demi Lovato. She came out not too long ago, as many might remember. She said she's non-binary. She requested the they, them pronouns. Now <laughs> she's changing her mind. She says she wants her biological pronouns of she and her back. I guess she says she's what they call gender fluid. Bobby, what do you make of this? Well, we have to remember that she is an employee of the machine. And this is a person that records music and is a sales engine for a large, a large media distribution company. This is a person who's had a history of mental health. And 
what a what a coincidence that this so happens to coincide with the fact that she's releasing a new album, a new sales event, a new a new flashpoint. Now all you have to do is call me by the pronoun that I was born with that every person in the world until five minutes ago thought was my pronoun. Call me that. And that's a news hit. And then people will come out and say, right. this fits nicely into the narrative. Let's let's put her in the headlines and what's she going to do? Sell more albums. That's what the people that control her operation want to happen. Well, Bobby, when I envision how this all went down and she said, you know what, it's time to, time to change these pronouns, I, I think maybe she had this reaction from her cat. Watch. Hi, my name is Erin. I use she, her pronouns, and I am this. <laughs> that cat right there is an American treasure. Uh, he must be Agreed. protected at all costs. Bobby, your thoughts? <laughs> I agree. It, these types of things are purely attention seeking, in my opinion. And I think, again, she's simply trying to sell more albums. And honestly, I don't think that this person is in control anyhow. I think people say, listen, if you want to be famous, if you want to sell albums, if you want to remain relevant, if you want to be in the machine, if you want to be part of the equation, you're going to do what we say and you're going to see the success. Don't you want to be like these other people that have had success? She was on Barney and Friends when she was 10 years old. This is a person who's been dictating to what to say in order to be rich her entire life. I think that her, like many other people in the Hollywood elite club, are controlled by, in a lot of ways, nefarious actors that don't have their best interest at heart. And when they can be manipulated that easily and have had a challenging life, they're just trying to sell albums at this point. Yeah, you know, Bobby, uh, people aren't having it. Consumers, you see Beyonce's album flopping. You see uh, people not tuning into these awards shows uh, over these Hollywood elites. So a lot of folks are really turned off. Bobby, a pleasure having you on the show. Come back anytime, all right?